There is nothing wrong with your computer screen. Do not attempt to adjust your picture. Welcome to a brand new fortnightly frontier. Now, if you're wondering where two fat blokes that look at each other from across the European continent and wax poetic about a video game have gone, have no fear, your benevolent hosts Darionator and Loose Unit are still here. What's happened is that we got to thinking, and if you know anything about us, that's never a good idea. However, as we were thinking, we came to the agreement that Fortnightly Frontier needs a change, and the primary change is bringing the game to the forefront. I mean, what good is a discussion about a game as detailed and beautiful as Star Citizen if there is nothing to show for it? So, gone are the live cameras, gone is the green screen, and in-game footage takes the spotlight. Don't worry though, the content of the show will not change, we're still us, we'll still drink beer, and we'll still crack jokes. But for those among you who miss the old format, the two fat blokes waxing poetic, I have but one question for you. What the hell is wrong with you? Now, before we begin with the show proper, as we should sing how long this damn intro has taken, there's another change we're implementing that we hope will become permanent, which is the addition of more guest podcasters slash hosts, and we'll be kicking off this new season of Fortnightly Frontier with the lovely Liana of Test Squadron, Best Squadron. Hi, Liana! Hey, guys! Hello! I'm waving and I realize I'm not even on camera anymore. I'm waving a Lego ship. Woo-hoo. Makes no difference. No camera. She mm. actually is. Star Citizen has been patched to 1.1.1 Hella Broke Yo. Mm. A wonderful, wonderful system. I tried landing my Avenger earlier and it decided to sit like a begging dog and then walk <laughs> around the back. And actually, when I got out, I fell through the floor and landed on the landing platform on foot. <laughs> walked around the back, tried to open the cargo bay doors. And they opened, pushing the Avenger to sit up in its normal landing position. And then everything was fine. I was missing a wing, but everything <laughs> else is <was> fine. <laughs> you don't need that wing, you're not in the atmosphere. It's fine. Yeah, exactly. And we'll follow that with the Hyper News, a quick rundown of the latest news from the verse. But firstly, hello, Liana, again. It's only now, the third time. Yes. Tell us more about yourself. Don't know what to say, really. I'm a small-time streamer. I'm a member of Test Squadron Best Squared On. Um, I don't really know what else to say. I, I'm an Aegis Dynamax fangirl. I like Lego, and I've made a Lego version of the Avenger, which no one will be able to see, but I'm sure we can shove a screenshot up or something. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, take a photo. I can take a photo for you guys later. Oh, and I'm currently drinking a uh, strawberry and lime Copperberg cider. Ooh. Strawberry and lime? That's a... Odd mm, combination. That sounds awesome. Yeah, it does sound awesome. Yeah, but mm, not very mainstream. It's more like more apples and pears where, I'm, where I come from. I don't know. In the UK, you get a lot of these uh, like strawberry ciders. I had a toffee apple cider the other day, which is gorgeous. But I hated the fact that I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we get a lot of random sweet crap shoved into. Sh- Sorry, am I allowed to swear? Oh yes, yeah. of course. All yeah. oh, right. That's Swear to fucking your fucking thing. heart's content. <laughs> sure thing, bitches. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we get loads of really sweet ciders with tons of fruits put in, other than normal um, apple and pear, and I'm a big fan. So basically, if it has sugar, you'll, you'll make cider out of it? Pretty much, yeah. That's probably why I'm going to have diabetes by the time I'm about age 35. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I need to go back to the UK and get me some cider. We'll be going there anyway, won't we? Yes, if we go to CitizenCon, yeah. Indeed. Which is you guys going to be there? Hopefully, Hopefully yes, we yeah. will. Hot oh, damn, I'll meet you there and I'll be bring my camcorder, so <laughs> hopefully we'll get some... Awesome. We'll actually get some fat guys on tape. Oh, yes! <laughs> <laughs> what the audience yeah. has been demanding all this time. <laughs> Without all of this camera work, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be able to stop working out every day to try and stay thin. <laughs> or drinking beer. Mm. Hey, that's a lot of exercise. I mean, step one, hold your glass. That's already heavy. Then lift it. Oh, you know, that's weightlifting. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm actually drinking out of a bottle right now, a wine bottle, so it's a little bit heavier. So, I've... That's, that's, even, that's closer to bench pressing. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yes. So if we return... 
back to the topic at hand. You said you were a streamer. So what got you into streaming? I don't really know. So I used to do YouTube videos a long time ago. Um, there are some incredibly crappy LPs out there, which I used to do of stupid games. Uh, Psychonauts is one of my favorites. Uh, I did a blind run of Resident Evil 4, which was horrible. Never do that game blind in front of an audience. It's just the worst thing. And I kind of wanted a bit more audience interaction. I couldn't get through YouTube. I wasn't big enough to actually get anyone to reply to any questions I asked. So streaming seemed like a natural thing to do. Cool. Are you still active on YouTube or not at all? I sometimes upload videos of my streams on YouTube <laughs> very occasionally. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm really not active on YouTube. To be honest, I haven't even had much time for streaming lately. Although I might well do, like, tonight or tomorrow night. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Uh, make <laughs> sure to let us know and we'll be tuning in. You can always click that favorite button or follow that button. That is also true. Is yes, Twitch. and if anybody's interested into following Liana on Twitch, we'll be posting a link in the video description below the video. I'm pointing at the bottom of the screen. And then As you usually do, yes, but nothing's going to show up. <laughs> Instead, just a spaceship's going to explode. Yeah. No one will know why. It's <laughs> Suddenly there's an Avenger sitting like up like a begging dog. <laughs> Instead of yeah. me pointing at the bottom of the screen. So, um, something more specific to this whole podcast thing that we're trying to do here, actually. Um, how long have you been a backer of Star Citizen? And, more importantly, how did you find out about it? I've been a backer for, oh, probably about 14 months now. <clears throat> um, I think I first heard about it on some random YouTube videos. I think Scott Manley, he was saying... Oh right, now's the time to come in because this is your last chance to get a lifetime insurance Aurora. And I, I just I went, why would I want that? <laughs> and I ignored it. <laughs> and that was about six months before I backed. <laughs> so you're one of those people that don't have a lifetime insurance Aurora? No, I don't have a lifetime insurance Aurora, but I do have a lifetime insurance ship now because I've gone from thinking, hmm, why would I want to pay... $30 on a fake internet spaceship with lifetime insurance to owning an Avenger which only has a normal six months insurance um, I then upgraded that to a freelancer uh, which I then broke down into the Avenger again uh, <laughs> Makes sense uh, Yeah, I decided I liked the Avenger too much I then resisted the Retaliator for such a long time so many sales, I just watched it go by, and that was fine. And then I bought a Vanguard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, I know your pain. The Retaliator is such a sexy ship. If they ever actually bring out a civilian version of that thing, with without the bomb bays and a more retrofitted interior for more utilitarian work and stuff like that, there will be very few reasons for me not to spend that money on that. I'm sure they will. I mean, if they do do variants, then that's going to be one of the variants they're going to do, a, a cut-down version. Yes, if they I don't can... do variants, then you just need to buy the actual thing and cut the stuff out yourself. Yeah. Well, yes. if, it, if it is going to be modular, as they claim it's going to be, there will be a lot of variety, yes. And I can already hear my wallet weeping in the corner. <laughs> yes, indeed. That's basically the same thing that happened with me, just slowly buying ships and eventually you spent a fortune. And that's mm. that. Yeah. I have to say, I never really pictured myself spending, what, 250, maybe 300 quid on this game now? Oh. Not to mention peripherals I bought. Oh yes, yes, of course. I'm actually I've probably spent just as much in um, attire than I have that I have in ships. <laughs> uh, onwards, onwards. What aspect of the game, my dear Liana, are you looking forward to the most? It has to be the bit we've already got. Combat. Combat, really? Yeah. I like the idea of trading and stuff like that, but ultimately. I want to fly through space and blow shit up in a massive fleet. 
and that's why I got the Vanguard. I plan on using it for escorting test squadron ships and for blowing up other people's ships. Okay. Um, right, so nothing about the first person bit, nothing about actually interacting with a lot of other people on a non-violent level? Um, well, I've met a lot of people and honestly I've found the best response is a violent response. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, seriously though, uh, the FPS, I'm interested because of how they're doing it, but I know I'm going to be terrible at it. I'm really bad at FPSs. Oh, they'll be, it'll be coming out a lot sooner than the Persistent Universe or the final version of the game, so you'll have a lot of time to practice at least. Yeah, what are we looking at at the moment? About a month? This Ish. Well, they, they did say originally March, then they moved it to April, but I have a feeling it's going to be around May now as well, yes. Or later. Yeah, I'd imagine so. Possibly mm. even later. <laughs> right, and uh, speaking of features that are coming in the game, or have not coming in the game, is there anything that you would like to see added to the game that's not in it yet? Or that hasn't even been announced? That hasn't even been announced? Yes, or... some... That's a tricky one. Um, being a Kerbal Space Program player, I'm probably going to say something like sticking engines on a moon and deorbiting it. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't there a real-time strategy game that lets you do something like that? Yeah, there is. It oh. was a remake of Total Warfare, I think, which was an old RTS where you controlled a load of ro Well, half of them were robots with people's souls put in them and half of them were people in robot suits and they right. were fighting were they over whether it was ethical. Total, no, was that Total Annihilation? Yes! Yeah, Total that's Annihilation, that's it. Yes. Yeah, I love that trailer and the end they just put some bunch of massive rockets into a moon and then crashed it into the planet. Yay for ultimate Armageddon winning scenarios. I like that. It is a great game mechanic. Unfortunately in Kerbal Space Program you can't do it with a moon, you can only do it with comets, but it's still there and that's what counts. <laughs> Have you managed to uh, crash one of those comments into the uh, space center? Oh, I tried. I tried so hard, but I missed. <laughs> I missed by about two kilometers, which, you know, on an orbital scale, is a pretty accurate shot. But oh. yeah, yeah, you'd still have annihilated it if it was big enough. Yeah, unfortunately, I chose one of the smallest rocks because they're quite hard to do it with. But I have blown up the center a load of times, including once with a giant wheel controlled by reaction engines, um, which just kind of rolled towards the main launch area and flattened it. It was quite funny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Can users check that out on your YouTube channel? I'm not sure that's on my YouTube channel. I should probably find the original video and put it on there. Yes. I've blown up the space center more times than I care to count. Yes. We should start a new series, uh, The Ultimate Destruction of Sp Kerbal Space Program. Brought to you by Liana. I actually have a t-shirt. Um, I could probably go get it, but it wouldn't help because we're not doing video, so never mind. Um, <laughs> I have a t-shirt that says, Kerbal Space Program. It's not homicide, it's just rocket science. <laughs> you actually have that t-shirt. Yeah, I don't wear it out much, but if you want proof, I'll go and get it. No, no that's me. okay. I believe it's, you. I believe you. Is that an official shirt, or did you have that specially made? I have no idea. My girlfriend got it for me. I think it's an official shirt, or someone's made it on the internet. Oh, that's fantastic. I need to find that shirt. Yeah. If it exists. It, it, well, we don't play that much Kerbal Space Program, but anything that that's, that's that hilarious needs to be worn in public. I'm just really terrible at it. Kerbal Space Program. I literally just add more rockets until uh, it explodes more. You, <laughs> sir, are promoted to Head of Engineering. <laughs> Woohoo! Get to work. <laughs> I'm super excited. Would that work in Star Citizen, though? Just take um, a ship, you know, with the modular system and just keep on adding engines, you know, take out the cockpit, add an engine, take out the shield, add an engine. I think that would work. It'd be quite interesting on an M50. Possibly not taking out the cockpit, that might be self-defeating, but <laughs> taking out the shield generation on an M50 and replacing it with an engine? That could be quite funny. <laughs> or some kind uh. of overclocking system in there. I guess that's what the, they'll do with the racing stuff, where you where you take out the 
shield generator and put a bigger power plant in or something. Oh, yeah, it's it's some something similar. You you sacrifice the weapons and shield potency to get a larger thruster on the ship. Yeah. Well, but they like that. you can attach anything in your ship that it, you know you require the certain pipes. So an engine needs cool coolant basically and power. Yeah. And some electronic systems to control it. And if you can fit those types against the types on the engine, you can put the engine in there. So if you could take out the shield generator, which requires power, and uh, put a power plant in there, so it sends power, maybe you could. Hmm. I think I think they made it a slightly less robust than that. They've they're adding you know actual geometry to the, the uh, mm -hmm. list of requirements. So you can't really put a, a thruster on the nose of the engine or something like that, yeah. which you can in Kerbal Space Program. Yeah, so not going to be able to get a Constellation engine and put it on M50. <laughs> <laughs> no, that but you might be able to get an M50 and put it on Constellation engine. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe just take the engines off a Constellation and replace them with M50s. You get twice as many engines and a couple more guns. That's a good plan. Mm. Doesn't the Constellation have four engine pods? Yeah. So you'd get four times as many engines. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Well, they're doing this thing with weapons. They're legitimately doing the thing where you can, if you've got a size four weapon, you can stick two size twos on it. Yeah. Pro providing you've got the right adapters, and I'm probably oversimplifying it, you probably lose a size. So it's probably a two size ones on a size three, but... Anyway, they're doing that, so I don't see a reason why you couldn't put two size one engines where a size two engine was meant to go. Provided you have a, a proper adapter for it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that's, uh, what, that's what they basically did with the 350R versus the 300Is. They have two yeah. smaller engines instead of one larger one. Yeah. And I th think, I don't know if this was a bug, but in, in uh, a multiplayer match or just a free flight we were doing, uh, somebody from Test Squadron took a 325, pulled the engine, uh, the thruster and engine off that, and put the engines from the 350 on it. And so it, he still had the weapons capability of the fighter version of the 300, but the speed of the 350. That's cool. Yeah. It was a bit clippy because the engines were basically one inside another. It was like yeah, a yeah. very stylish Venn diagram. <laughs> <clears throat> but it, it worked. I don't know if that's intentional, but it worked. And speaking of such modifications, um, another question that we have on this list that we were supposed to be sticking not to, but fuck that. Um, <laughs> what would be uh, your perfect ship? Or... Oh, a sub question what is currently your favorite ship in the game and then what would be your perfect ship okay well my favorite ship in the game is probably the tally I might have resisted buying her but I love the way she looks I love bombers I've always been a bit big fan of things like uh, Y wings from Star Wars and even the tie bombers I I love the idea of them of just having so much ordnance packed into a small craft so, yeah, Tally's good, probably my favourite one in there. As for ideal one, an Aegis dynamic ship, which is more like the Gladiator. So, lots of missiles, and still that sexy curvy look. Hmm, yeah. But I've flown the Gladiator and it is a pig. Oink, Would that oink. bother you? Oink, oink. Well, no, because I played, like, I flew Y-Wings in the old uh, X-Wing games, and they did fly like pigs. You know, they, they didn't turn yeah. on a dime, they turned on the football field, and <laughs> that's fine, because you've got so many missiles that no one's going to sit in front of you. Yeah, that's true. So, if you get them in front of you, which is a challenge, because you, you move crap, but if you get them in front of you, they're gone. Yeah. Problem. Solved. Done. Dusted. Yeah, in the yeah. X-Wing games, I used to, it used to be you basically fly in with the Y-Wing, lock onto as many tugs as you can and fire all of your ro all of your missiles away and then run away. Yeah, that was it. And But you just destroy everything. It's awesome. And that's what a bomber should do. Yeah. 
Well, um, the Retaliator is supposed to be something like that, or the Vanguard, but there's a slight difference as well. Cause, because um, the Vanguard... That's does it the long-range escort fighter, basically, the, yeah, the Vanguard. But, uh, yeah. And the Retaliator is a heavy bomber. Is a heavy bomber. Yeah, there's just so many different classes. I don't, will they be able to fit them all from all manufacturers, you know? Or will you be forced into a specific manufacturer if you wanted a long-range heavy bomber and only one of them made such a thing? I think at first, certainly, it's going to be a case of, well, if you want a carrier-based bomber, you're going to be looking at Anvil Aerospace. And if you want a long-range bomber, you're going to be looking at the tally. Although in you know, real life it would make sense that each company would be making a variant for each situation. Uh, there's just a limited amount of developer time, isn't there? Yeah, that's true, yeah. Yeah, and some companies would get military contracts and, and the like. I mean, at the like you look at Boeing and they make they don't make the same planes that Airbus do in the military space, but they do in the civilian space where there's competition. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But when they were having when, when they were having the, the VTOL thing where they had the um, Boeing had their own version of whatever it's called the J, J something J the American plane that the that the British uh, Air Force or Navy or Army are buying at the moment that's vertical takeoff and landing to replace the Harrier jump jet mm-hmm. yeah and, I think um, it was wasn't it the F-35 uh, yeah F-35 joint strike fighter and yeah. Boeing had their own version of it so they went into competition so Boeing aren't making their version of it now but um it's it's not Airbus, it's um, some other manufacturer. But so I guess it, when you're talking about military hardware like that, it's it, Lockheed Martin is the manufacturer. When you're talking about military hardware like that, they generally don't compete with each other in the actual production, just in the development. And then the Army or Navy or Air Force picks what they want because that's going to suit their needs the best and then that's what gets produced. That's nice. absolutely a fair point. Um, yeah, I see. So the, the Tally won the ranged bomber uh, market for Aegis Dynamics, I suppose. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> oh, that makes perfect sense, yeah. And what's your favourite colour and why? Uh, my favourite colour is black and yellow. <laughs> black and yellow, black and yellow. <laughs> and uh, why? Because Montoya is paying me to say so. <laughs> <laughs> how many... How many... How many or how many cents per view of this video do you get for saying that? Uh, none, but I think I get an Aurora. <laughs> a rental Aurora from Siang. <laughs> and one final question. When you are a captain of your own frigate or carrier and you're watching your enemies burn in the night sky on the bridge, what drink would you be sipping on? Probably Amaretto. Hmm. Interesting choice. Interesting choice indeed. The drink of winners. <laughs> or not. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. And when, well, test when squadron. When I'm captaining a test squadron frigate. <laughs> yeah. The... And I'm hearing the massive explosions around me as someone has launched their fighter without opening the cargo bay doors. <laughs> <laughs> then I'll be mixing it with coke. <laughs> <laughs> Which kind of coke? <laughs> Honestly, probably the snorty kind and the drink kind. <laughs> Both at the same time. Yeah. Just yes. <laughs> uh, okay. Um that reaches the the end of this sort of lighthearted portion of the show and let's get on to some serious business, shall we? Because Star Citizen has been recently patched to 1.1.1 point seriously point borked. There have been many matchmaking issues. Have you been experiencing them? I haven't played. I only updated 10 minutes before we started recording this show. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, As I usually attempted do. to play mm. and I got a black screen. Then I attempted to play again and I got a black screen. Then I attempted to play and I ended up back in my hangar. And then I did free flight. Yay! Woohoo! I, I, we actually, um, in the Mumble Tests um, server, we actually managed to get two. Or no, it was it was a single match going on after over an hour of trying. 
which was seriously, seriously um, frustrating. But we have to remember that this is an alpha. And somebody in the chat also mentioned that he should just get one of those um, teddy bears with a rip cord on the back that just said, just go, this is an alpha, every time somebody complained. <laughs> yeah. No, just, you have, this is something to be expected. But um, they have been on it. There have been hot fixes, server side fixes uh, on the way, which have made things um, semi stable currently. First off, they made them considerably worse, and they immediately removed that first hot fix, and they are now on hot fix number four at the moment, which should make things kind of work, I suppose. Hopefully. Hopefully. I might want to have a game this week. It really doesn't help that they had an unstable patch, which was still unstable, and then they released another patch on top of it, which has just ended up with problems on top of problems. Yeah, I'm wondering how that got past QA. I think and what is it about... I really think they're pushing very hard to get these patches out. Hmm. Because... And then again, um, there is only so many people in the QA department, and then when the patch is finally released, there's going to be thousands of people flooding the servers, and maybe that is the sort of thing that they can't test in QA. The sort of <laughs> massive instantaneous server load that just makes the servers crab themselves. Precisely. I think most of the problem they're actually suffering from is the servers they've got at the moment can't handle the volume which you're playing now, which is a great thing because we didn't used to have that volume. Yeah. yeah. So that's got to be a good sign. Yeah, since 1.0, I think they started seeing... Uh, when the REC came in, I is where they really saw a big hit in um, the number of people joining. Because mm. people can now go and play with whatever ship they want as long as they play. Well, not all of the ships are available for purchase with REC as of yet, but they will be, yes. I th can, you, can you not get any flyable ship in the game at the moment? No, you can't get the Super Hornet, you can't get the Gladiator, I think you can't get like the 350R, maybe the M50. Quite a lot of the sail ships aren't on sale for REC yet. Okay, cool. I think, oh, I did see that in the in the latest Around the Verse was that they talked about um, actually allowing or putting them up for a temporary time or a limited time um, for rent on REC, so yes. The interesting thing will be to see whether if you grab, say, an M50 on REC and your week expires, will you be able to renew it even though the sale's over? Or is that it? Oh, well, somebody has asked that and they said that uh, automated renewal should be an option. Mm -hmm. Feature request. Fe yeah, well, it is, it's supposed to be in there. That was in the original design document for the REC that automated renewal for a uh, lower price. Uh, will Ooh, be in okay. uh, the system. Yeah, like 80%. If you, like, when you first order it, I think you should have, like, a check mark that says, I don't want this just for a week, automatically renew when the period is up, and then you get it for 80% of the price. Okay, that's that's a nice little. That should be in there. Yeah, that should be in there. It was in the initial design document. Well, you can do it, but it's not auto-renew. So I think you have to do it before you use your last day's worth of rental. Well, for now, yes. Until that feature is in. And I will be certainly using it a lot when the Gladiator is available to get with REC because I have was able to fly it thanks to a very um, beneficial member of Test Squadron. And it is a very sexy ship. Um, sort of like the Hornet, but I think like 28 years newer in terms of design with a same sort of design language, but a lot sleeker, if you know what I mean. But f for flying, it is quite a pig because the Hornet is only about six, eight tons lighter. It's uh, about 28 tons versus 20 to 22, depending on which variant you get. But it would seem that the Hornet has much more powerful thrusters because the inertia is real. You turn yes. the ship 90 degrees and you keep going in the original direction and unless you just keep mashing that uh, boost button. Which I think the thrusters are all a bit up in the air at the moment because someone in the forums did a calculation. 
and worked out that some ships have thrusters which are more powerful than other ships' main engines. Yeah. yeah. Which is just ridiculous. That's obviously not how it's intended to be. But... Mm-hmm. Yeah, the M50 for it is just in, stops immediately when you when you put it in a full reverse, and it's like, what? I just I yeah. just I just did a stop from like 1600 kilometers an hour or whatever down to zero in less than a second. I would have died immediately. My body would have exploded. Mm, into into a fine pink mist. <laughs> yeah. You sort of have the Five Nights at Freddy's issue where you're in a suit and you're suddenly moving forward and you've just gone splattered out of the suit. Suddenly my, you, the windscreen is, is, wet, is red from the inside. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Matches the rest of the ship. Yeah, it just matches. Yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> uh, yes, um, but it is a very great ship to fly in multiplayer. The um, second seat actually works, and uh, I am told it also works in the Cutlass. I mean, the uh, the turret seat, that is, which is the only second seat in the Gladiator, but the Cutlass has several others. And... You get a reticle, you get free movement, and you get to go pew pew with the with the turret guns, which is a lot more than I was expecting from this patch. We'll have to After have a go. And if I remember from the patch notes, if you have a super hornet and you get yourself in the turret seat, you can shoot the pilot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, That's that awesome. is yes. I actually saw that happen. That's awesome. <laughs> yes, for some reason the turret gun clips into the ship and goes down so far that you can shoot the pilot in the back of the head. It's al- <laughs> It's alpha. I mean, it's alpha. <laughs> yes. I'm doing the voice of the little toy. Yeah. And that's the thing, isn't it? This patch, because they went through the big re- naming thing of calling it Star System 1.0 and then they realized that that was a really dumb name because it makes everyone who hasn't played the game yet think, oh, it's released? Yeah. Yeah, um, exactly. But now, now we're officially in Alpha 1.1.1. Good thing. Officially Alpha, not pre-Alpha. Yeah. Alpha. Woohoo! Well, I've I've always had this issue with the way the games, uh, the stages of game development are being named recently because it's always been Alpha, Beta, RC, Gold. Alpha me meaning officially. Uh, not feature full, plen- plenty of bugs. Beta, feature full, plenty of bugs. RC, you know, still some bugs. Uh, we're getting to them. And then final, which is basically a version of the release candidate with as few bugs as possible. However, now that all these games are being constantly developed, it's not just like in the old days, you got to final development and then you maybe you just did bug fixes from then on. Now games are gonna keep getting uh, f- new features, and that whole thing is out the window because you're never, you know, you never get out of the whole um, official alpha stage, which is you know fully featured. So I think we should just stop calling it that all that and come up with something new. Well, I think it, an alpha is really something that is still pre-release, basically. Well, so is beta. Yeah, but Alpha is more of a, like, as you said, I mean, you just described it before. And I think what's happened is that previously in in game development, you had like 1.0 and then 1.1 and 1.2 or whatever. And those 1.1 and 1.2 were actually bug fix patches. And now they're they're largely content patches as well as bug fix patches. And that's kind of what's really changed in in the whole game development space. Yeah, and using the same nomenclature as before just leads to some confusion as to where in the development the game actually is. Yeah, I I did really like um, Chris Roberts' post on the whole naming scheme thing because he really uh, went into detail about how much he liked the community talking about it, not because they were having an argument, but because they all did it for the same reason. They all wanted to see the game be a success, and part of that is making sure that we we, we don't confuse people, basically. And he was really positive about that, about the community, and I really like that post about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, just you know, just about everything that Chris Roberts does is very community um, oriented, and you can see that he has a lot of passion for the whole project, in as much as he has the passion for the community that backed him 
which is something you don't see a lot in game development. Valve were, you, were used to be like that, but right now they seem to only care about hats. Valve still are. But yeah, I have to say, I've seen plenty of things where Gabe Newell has like personally replied to people's oh, emails yes, saying, oh, yes. Steam is bugged. Oh, no, you need to do this, 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 this. You know, that's the head of the company saying, oh, this is how you bug fix <laughs> our system. That's a really good level of dedication. It is, it is, definitely, yes. But where the fuck is my Half-Life 3, damn it? It'll be, it'll be done by the time Star Citizen is done. I doubt it, <laughs> frankly. <laughs> No, that's going to be the next big release in Star Citizen. So you got the FPS module, then the social module, and then the Half-Life 3 module. <laughs> <sighs> yes, we're all we're all shareholders in Valve because Squadron 42 bought them. Yes. Squadron 42, Foundry 42. What am I saying? No. Foundry 42 bought them. Valve. Yeah. Did they? I don't no. know. I'm <laughs> Oh, I'm just talking nonsense. You heard it here first. Yeah. <laughs> thirst. <laughs> Have a drink. You heard it here. I'm thirsty. <laughs> well, I think we should be wrapping up this show by now. We have gone way, way, way longer than I originally anticipated. Did you need to so, add so many ways in there to extend the length of the Yes, okay. because it's all over 35 minutes already. <laughs> Oh, nice, nice. <laughs> yes, it is. We've been waxing poetic more than usual. And let's just finish off with the hyper news. As of the time of the recording, we are only hours away from reaching $79 million in funding. We talked about this before, but the Star Citizen's current version is now called Star Citizen Alpha. Indeed, to prevent any confusion with the final release version. There has been a design document release describing the FPS stances and breathing mechanic, uh, showcasing how the whole aiming, running, interacting, stamina dynamic will work in the FPS module and later in the Persistent Universe. Gamescom 2015 tickets are now on sale. As of recording this episode, there are around about 600 left, so maybe there'll still be some by the time the episode comes out, but there were 2,000 on sale originally. So if you want to meet us, because I'm going, Dayanade is going, Get cracking, buy some tickets. Link in the description. Inside CAG Foundry 42 Germany video is out. Go check out and learn more about the newly established studio in Frankfurt, Germany and what they're up to. Link in the video description as well. And sorry we were a bit late on this one, but the Retaliator is also hanging already. I think we discussed that earlier. Yes, and it is a sexy, sexy beast. Absolutely. And that's it for the Hyper News and this episode of Fortnightly Frontier. And we will see you in the, in verse. the verse.